Hey guys, welcome back to the 2017 level 3 uh, 2017 integration paper. So in this uh, video, I'm going to be covering question 3. So I'm going to get straight back into it. So find the integral of 9 divided by x to the power 4 plus 8 e to the power 4x. Alright, so uh, once again, we have this uh, x to the power 4 on the denominator. And we don't want that. We want to get rid of the denominator. So we're going to move the x to the power 4 up, um, up and make the power negative, okay? So instead we're gonna rewrite this as the uh, we're gonna rewrite this as the integral of nine x to the power of negative four plus eight e of four x and dx. Alright, so uh once again we're just gonna add one to the power and divide by the new power, okay? So uh negative four plus one is negative three. Nine divided by negative uh nine divided by negative three is uh is negative three. So it's just gonna become uh negative three x to the power of negative three. And then um uh, plus our uh derivative uh not derivative our integration of e to the power four uh, eight e to the power four x, so now we need to find the derivative of uh, of the e to the power four x. We find the derivative of four x. The derivative of four x is four, so we're going to divide the eight by the four. So that's just going to become e uh two e to the power four x. And uh, if we simplify this a little bit, we should get a uh, negative three divided by x to the power 3 plus 2e to the power 4x. And that there should be your final answer. Uh, oh, sorry, plus c. Once again, I forgot the plus c. So plus c, don't, don't forget that. I keep forgetting the plus c. Uh, sorry about that. So a cheap grade there. Uh, question 2. Julia wants to find an approximation of the area of a paved courtyard that she wishes to construct on her property. She takes some measurements, and these are shown on her, the diagram below. Using these measurements and a trapezium rule, find an approximation of the area of the paved courtyard. Okay, so you know the trapezium rule, you should see this on your formula sheet, okay? So the trapezium rule is the height, uh, height which is our basically our y value. Our y value, um, uh, how should I say, divided by 2 and multiplied by, uh, so I'm just going to write it down, um, a level three. I'm just going to write the formula down, just Apologize. Um, so our uh, our trapezium rule is basically uh, h over two times of y zero plus uh, y to the power of n plus two y one plus y two. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, so that's our trapezium rule. Okay. So basically, uh, for each uh, for each so the first and last uh, normally just um. Added once, okay. Depending on how many times the side is counted, okay. So um, it, it all depends really how how many times that side is counted. So our height, our height is basically um, we'll, we'll say that this uh height is two, so two 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 two. So I would just say our height is two. So two divided two divided by two is just one. So we're just gonna cancel that out, and just make it one times of um, everything else. So as you can see here, uh, this 6, okay, this 6 is counted twice, okay, so it'll be 6 times of 2, plus, um, should be, uh, should be 8 times of 2, um, uh, should be 8 times of 2, plus 10 times of 4, and plus 11 times of 2, plus 12 at the end, and I think that it should be that, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. No. Okay. Um, so I've done something wrong, sorry guys, um, um, 6 times 2 plus A. Oh, sorry, I've got this, I think I've got this mixed up with the Simpsons rule. Yep, sorry guys, so... You have six times two, and you're just gonna add um, eight times two plus of ten times two plus eleven times two, and plus of the twelve at the end, and that sh and that should be the right answer. Sorry, guys. So that should be. Just double check this. Should give you eighty two. Yeah, should give you an answer of eighty two. Eighty two meters square. Alright, so the uh this six is actually counted twice. Okay, so one once here and then once so one time with this trapezium and then once with this trapezium. Okay, so it's actually counted twice, that's why we did the six times two. 
But for this 12 at the edge here, it's only counted once, okay? This, this 12, that's only counted once with this trapezium. So that's why we only included the 12 once, okay? And that's why we included the 6 twice. Yeah, and that, and that should get you um, achieved. Achieved question. Yeah, sorry about the confusion about that. It's my bad. Julia's friend, Sarah, believes that the equation of a curved border of the paved courtyard can be modeled by the function y equals to 15x minus 15 divided by x plus 2. Use integration to find the area of the courtyard as shown in the diagram above. So we're trying to integrate our y into the area, but we have 15x minus 15 and x plus 2 at the bottom. We have a uh, single x at both the numerator and the denominator, and we don't want that. Uh, and we don't want we don't want that when we want to integrate. We don't want these um, uh, these this type of x values that's um really hard to integrate. Okay, so we're going to be using the long division rule here. Okay, so we're going to be using the uh fifteen x minus fifteen uh divided by x plus two. So basically, we're just going to use um long division. So long division here. So x plus two, and fifteen x minus fifteen. Um, yeah. Alright, so um, the main purpose of this um, division is to get rid of the x completely, okay? So you have 1x up here and you have 15x here. If I multiply 1x by 15, that will give me 15x, and 15x minus 15x will give me 0, and that will completely cancel out the, x, the 15x, um, uh, cancel out the x, so we'll get rid of the x. It's basically the purpose of this, is just to get rid of the x. So we're going to put 15 at the top, and that's, this will become 15x, um, x plus 2 times 15 plus a 30, and it's a minus, okay? So, this should come out as 0x, negative 15 minus 30, that is negative 45. Alright, so now we're going to rewrite this as our integral, okay? So this just becomes our integral of our... Um, uh, what we uh, what number we multiplied it by? So fifteen, plus of. Plus of our remainder over our divisor, so plus of negative forty five over x plus two. And now it actually makes it a lot easier to integrate. Uh, yeah, and that makes it uh, just like a lot more easier to integrate. So that's dx here. What am I doing? Okay, dx. And that will just become 15x plus, okay, so this will become ln. Uh, so if I, if I differentiate the bottom, it will give me 1. So x plus 2, the derivative of x plus 2 is 1. And then the top is negative 45. So I have to add negative 45 before the ln to multiply the result by negative 45. So then we get the negative 45 on the numerator. So this will be plus of, neg uh, plus of negative 45 ln of, uh, ln of x plus 2. So that just becomes uh, equals to 15x minus 45 ln of x, no, sorry, minus uh, ln of x plus 2. Alright, so we want to find the area between uh, 11 and 1. So that will be, oh, sorry, we should, 11 and 1, 11 and 1. Okay, so now we just need to substitute 11 into the equation and minus 1 substitute into the equation. So 15 times of 11 minus 45 times of ln of uh, 13. And um, this minus uh, 15 times of 1 uh, minus 45 uh, times of ln of x plus 2, which is 3. Sorry. Alright, so just need to do a little bit of calculator work here. I uh, should get our answer, sorry. sorry. So it's 165 minus 45 of ln. ln of 13. Okay, so that should come out as uh, that equals to which equals to forty nine point five seven seven minus of um we'll calculate this part so fifteen minus forty five ln of three. So, so 
Okay, so 15. And that should give us, um, that should give us a uh, minus of negative 34.4. So now double negative makes a positive, so 49.577 plus 34.437. Uh, so 33.4. Okay. And that should give you your answer. Your answer should come out to be, um, um, my answer comes out as to be uh, uh, 83.96, okay? Which is approximately the uh on the SCA paper it says eighty four point one zero five, uh it's, it's pretty close so it should be accepted just a bit of rounding uh rounding mistakes there, so basically this is a merit question you get merit for finding the correct final answer and again achieved at the correct integration, so correct integration we're looking at, um, it's this one here. All right, moving along. Solve the differential equation dy over dx equals to y over square root of x, given that when x equals 4 and y equals to 1. Alright, so you notice in this equation, okay, on the right hand side we have both y and x. Uh, we, we can't actually dif uh, integrate with two different variables, and that's a problem. So now we wanna, what we want to do is we want to move the dy and the y together, and we want to move dx and x together. So all we need to do is a simple bit of algebra. Uh, it's a bit of algebra here. So, um, basically, dy over dx equals 2. Um, y times 1 over square root of x. So, therefore, um, therefore, um, Okay, so we can, uh, actually, we can actually, this is not a good way to do this. Actually, we can say that dx over dy equals 2 square root of, oh, okay, that's the exact same thing, sorry. Um, uh, dy times the square root of x equals to dx of y. So, therefore... Okay, so therefore, uh, 1 over y dy should equal 1 over square root of x dx. Yeah, that should, that's what I should give you. Sorry about that. That's, uh, my algebra skills are pretty rusty. Um, pretty bad. So now we just need to integrate both sides of the equation. So you integrate dy and integrate dx to do it separately. So basically, integration of 1 over y dy equals to integration of uh, we move that we uh, we don't like the square roots, so we're gonna move um the square root up. So it's gonna, it's gonna become um x to the power negative zero point five dx. And then one over y. Okay, that basically integrates to um ln of y. That equals two. Uh, so you add one to the power, divide by the new power. That should give you two x to the power zero point five, which is basically. 2 divide, um, no, sorry, 2 divide, right? 2 times square root of x. And don't forget the plus c. Okay, so basically now we have uh, when x equals to 4 and y equals to 1. So ln of 1 equals to 2 square root of 4 plus c. ln of 1 is 0. Uh, ln of 1 is 0, so 0 equals 2, square root of 4 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus c, therefore c equals a negative 4. Um, so therefore you have uh, ln of y equals 2, 2 square root of x minus 4, and if you move the ln to the other side, okay, that becomes e to the power of whatever's on the right hand side. So y equals 2, e to the power of 2 square root of x minus 4. And that should be a final answer, and that should get you a uh, merit grade. To get an achieved grade, you're looking at the correct integration. So, let's see here. Achieved. Alright. 
x and y satisfy the differential equation dy over dt equals to k cos of 0 0.5 t times e to the power of 0 point sine uh, 0 0.5 uh, sine of 0 0.5 t. Okay, so this question just quite a lot of variables, but we're going to try to simplify it. First thing you got to notice that if you um, find the dif uh, integration of um, e to the power of sine 0 0.5 t, that will actually give you so sine of 0 0.5 t, okay, you find the differentiate uh, sine of 0 0.5 t. Uh, if you differentiate that, you should get um, uh, 0 0.5, uh, should get, um, 0 0.5 cos of t. Okay, notice that. So you should get um, e to the power of sine 0 0.5 t. The differentiation of that is um, uh, 0 0.5 cos of t. Sorry, 0 0.5 t. Sine or, or cos of 0 0.5 t. That's what you should get, okay, if you differentiate. But when you integrate, you're going to divide by that. So you're going to be divided by 0 point cos of uh, 0 0.5 t. But notice that you have cos of 0 0.5 t right there. And that's um, really good news because they both can cancel out. So this can cancel out with um, with this. Okay, so then you'll just be left with um, uh, 0 0.5. So there'll be a k here. And this whole thing divided by 0 0.5. So you move the 0 0.5 back up. So you just get 2k of e to the power of sine 0 0.5t. And that makes our life a lot more simpler. Okay, so now you can just... Um, uh, now, uh, that, that's the integral because we already we've already integrated e to the power of sine zero point five t. So now, uh, what you have here is um, what you have here is our y, and don't forget the plus c at the end. All right. So, uh, using the information of the graph, so when t equals zero, y equals to eight. So eight equals to two k times of e to the power of sine zero point five t sine of um, zero. And also, we know that when t equals to uh, when t equals to two, y equals to twelve. So twelve equals to two k times of e to the power of sine of one. Okay, so uh, now we just need to simplify a little bit. So e to the power of zero. Oh no, so e to the power of sine to power uh, sine of zero. <sighs> sine of zero is zero. So e to the power of zero is one. One times of two k is still two k. So therefore, two k equals to eight. Uh, is that right? Sine of zero. Uh, one. Uh, one. No, that's zero. E to the power of zero is zero. It's one. Two k. Yeah, you should get your k value should be four. Just let me double check that. So eight times of e to the power of sine of one. Sine of one. Hmm. Sorry, I'm being very stupid. Oh god. Sorry guys, I've been making quite a lot of mistakes in this in this video. I apologize. I, I forgot about the plus C totally. Oh god, that's so bad. So sine sine of one times of e to the power of sine of one. So e to the power of one. So you also have four point six three nine five k equals 2, sorry, plus c, once again, wow, plus c equals to 12. So now it's a bit of simultaneous equations, okay, it's a pretty simple one. I say simple, but watch me screw up. So 8 plus that equals 2, um, not 8 plus c. <sighs> it's 2k plus c equals to 12, okay? And no, not twelve, eight. Um. So now I just solve a simultaneous equations. So two point six three nine five k equals to twelve minus eight. So two point six three nine five k equals to four. Four divided by. So you should get your k value as one point one point five. One five, and now you can solve. Okay, so I can say when t equals to five now. So you can say, 
So now I can rewrite the equation. So y equals 2. Uh, 1.15 times of 2. So y equals to 3.03 .03 times of e to the power of sine of 0.5t. So now I just substitute our t equals to 5. So 3.03 e to the power of sine of 2.5. So now it's just putting into all into your calculator. So sine of 2.5 e to the power of that answer e to the power times of 3.03. .03. And that should give you your answer as uh it should give you your answer as sorry. Um should you, mm, Sorry guys, I made another mistake. I forgot to find the C value. I forgot the C value existed again. <sighs> Sorry guys, I apologize. I sincerely apologize for what I've been doing today. It's fucking stupid. Okay, so we still our K is still well, 1.515. But we still need to find our C value, which I've forgotten. 3.03 plus C equals to 8. So uh, C equals to 8 minus of... So C equals to 4.97. Sorry guys, uh, once again, I feel I feel kind of bad. That's pretty stupid. Y equals to 3.03. E to the power of 0 0.5. Uh, not 0 .5. Oh, wow. What am I doing? Sign of uh, 0 0.5 T plus of 4.97. So now you can plug into your calculator. Shocking. It really is. <sighs> Alright, so this time you should get your answer as 10.48. And that should be your final answer. Oh, we finally got there. Oh, it's an excellent question. To get, a, to get a merit grade, you have a correct integration. Sorry, that's this part here. It's not cheap. Uh, not cheap, man. Yeah, and that's it for this paper. Yeah, once again, I apologize for making so many errors in this video. Uh, it's being, yeah, it won't happen again, guys. Just make make sure that won't happen again. It's just uh, like not acceptable. Sorry about that, but I hope you still enjoyed nonetheless, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thank you.